Rohit asks, In Lightning Network, when we create a payment channel, is it secure like the blockchain? Does this channel have the same security and auth authentication operations like the blockchain? Yes. So it's really important to understand that a transaction on Lightning Network, if you're doing a Bitcoin channel, is a Bitcoin transaction. Now, imagine if I created a transaction, um, and instead of broadcasting it on the Bitcoin blockchain, I signed the transaction and then gave it to you. And you can broadcast it whenever you want, or you can just hold on to it. Anytime you take that signed transaction and broadcast it, you get the outcome of that transaction. So, we have exchanged a signed transaction, we just haven't broadcast it. That is how Lightning works. So Lightning payment channels are parties exchanging signed Bitcoin transactions. and It has the exact same security, and authentication, and authorization qualities, the same security guarantees as the Bitcoin blockchain. In fact, that is why Lightning works. Because it requires the security of the underlying Bitcoin blockchain. Lightning is routing smart contracts, pre-signed Bitcoin transactions. And it needs those smart contracts, those pre-signed Bitcoin transactions, to be secure, to be valid on the underlying blockchain. Why do Lightning Network participants need to be online to execute transactions? Well, that not entirely sure. it's not entirely true that the Lightning Network participants need to be online to execute transactions. They need to be online to start a transaction. So, for example, in order to create an invoice to be paid, they need to be online. And under some circumstances, they need to be online to monitor the channels, but they can also outsource the monitoring of channels to third parties. Keep in mind, Lightning Network is intended to be a live, small payment, fast network. It is not intended to be a batch, big transaction, long-term payments network. That is best done on-chain. In a Lightning channel, what happens in a three-person scenario if the third person does not send the reimbursement? Well, in any Lightning Network scenario, if one of the parties um, fails to uh, finish the commitment to a channel, does not update their state, or does not close the channel when asked, then the other party uh, can close the channel by transmitting one of the prior states. The only way that balance can be pushed forward through the channel is if the parties share a hash pre-image, which is the secret for unlocking a uh, hash time-locked commitment. And in that case, um, the party uh, who has sent that balance uh, can also receive the same balance from the previous channel endpoint with the same secret. So you don't have to trust that any of the other parties participating in Lightning are going to behave as expected. In fact, the whole point of this is that you do transactions with people who are not expected to behave in any particular way. They may disappear, they may stop responding to channel requests, they may refuse to close a channel, they may refuse to forward a hash time locked contract. They may do whatever they want to do. It doesn't matter. You don't need to trust them because at every step of the way you have a signed Bitcoin transaction that is valid that allows you to recover your funds. And that's the whole point. The whole point is that the network itself does not require trust between participants. Steven asks, how will the Lightning Network handle distributed denial of service attacks? Well, Steven, that really depends on what kind of distributed denial of service attacks we're talking about. In order to create a Lightning Network payment channel, uh, you have to commit funds. and That makes it difficult for someone to simply create uh, payment channels and, and not use those payment channels. Secondly, 
um, in order to propagate payments across payment channels, there usually is a small fee. And we'll see how that plays out and whether that will lead to distributed denial of service attacks. Also, Lightning Network nodes, just like Bitcoin nodes, monitor the type of information they're receiving from adjacent nodes from their peers. And if they see that um, the information they're receiving is incorrect or invalid, they will limit the connection or potentially even ban the nodes that are misbehaving. All peer-to-peer -peer networks have to have some mechanism for protecting against misbehaving peers. And the most common way to do that is to either throttle or ban for a short period of time or potentially ban for a long period of time. So Lightning Network will handle distributed denial of service attacks in the same way that every peer-to-peer -peer network handles them. Uh, and that's an ongoing process because as each type of attack is handled, attackers come up with new ways to attack the network, and that forces the network to adapt, which forces the attackers to adapt, which forces the network to adapt. And gradually you evolve the system to become more and more resilient to denial of service attacks. Uh, Bitcoin itself is under denial of service attack all the time, and it gradually evolved to become quite strong and resilient against denial of service attacks. That doesn't mean they're impossible. It just means they're not very effective. They cost a lot of money to uh, execute, and they don't really do much. The same thing with the internet. Uh, TCP/IP, DNS, uh, HTTP, many other protocols and infrastructures on the internet have gradually evolved to handle bigger and bigger distributed denial of service attacks and become resilient. A follow-up question from Susanna, who bans a node and how does banning a node work? Well, this is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network, which means that your own Lightning Network node connects to um, 10 or 15 other nodes and uses that to create a mesh network. So your node decides what nodes to connect to. And it decides whether it needs to ban one of its neighbors from misbehaving. So who bans nodes? Everyone bans nodes. If they start misbehaving, everyone who experienced that misbehavior will ban those nodes, and eventually they will not be able to connect to the network at all. That's how it works in Bitcoin. That's how it works in Lightning Network. There is no centralized authority here. Each node decides whether to ban its neighbors or not.